Three new stories for you. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has once again contacted Kenyatta, Kenyan president. Just a few hours ago, telephonic conversation took place between Kenyatta and Anthony Blinken. Agenda was one point agenda, Tigray, Ethiopian conflict. What happened in the telephonic contact between Kenyatta and Blinken? Secondly, was yesterday, PM Abi shared his pictures, videos from a battlefront in a far region. I saw a picture of PM Abi. Uh, I want to speak on that. Uh, lastly, uh, WFP spokesperson has briefed us about latest humanitarian situation in Ethiopia. I have a video clip for you. Some aid trucks have arrived in Tigray too, but overall situation is very alarming. Around 10 million people are in urgent need of aid now in Amhara, Afar, Tigray. I have his detailed report in a video clip for you. Firstly, viewers, uh, Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State, visited uh, uh, Kenya more than a week ago. He visited three countries, Kenya, Senegal, Nigeria. He is back in the U.S. Once again, he has contacted Kenyatta, Kenyan president. U.S. State Department has issued a statement about telephonic conversation between Kenyatta and Blinken. And there was one point agenda of this telephonic conversation, Ethiopian conflict. Uh, the statement issued from your State Department is saying that uh, Anthony Blinken uh, reiterated his, his position, U.S. position, that uh, talks must start on urgent basis. Military escalation is being seen. That is why on urgent basis talks must start. Well, on the ground situation is telling us that there is no likelihood of the start of talks now. Obasanjo's mediation effort backed by the US, backed by the African Union has failed so far. Anthony Blinken uh, and U.S. Envoy of the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feldman, are not seen as impartial figures. They cannot play a direct role in the resolution of this crisis. Kenyatta has been trying to convince PM Abi to soften his position and start talks. He visited uh, Ethiopia more than a week ago. He met with uh, the PM and, and President of Ethiopia. And after that, we heard rumors that PM Abi was ready to make some concessions. We did not uh, know which concessions PM Abi uh, agreed. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we only uh, heard that he was ready to make some concessions. After that, we saw PM Abi's announcement that he was to join his forces uh, and we saw him in Afar. Massive counter-offensives were launched from Afar, from, from Gojam, from Gondar sides. And now heavy clashes are underway. So, according to my analysis, there is no likelihood of uh, immediate start of talks between TPLF and Ethiopian government. Both parties want to start the talks from a position of strength. Uh, TDF was trying to take control of Malay, Ethiopia, Djibouti Road. It could not. Now, Ethiopian government is trying to push TDF out of uh, uh, strategic positions in Amhara and it uh, might uh, start talks after pushing TDF out of uh, strategic places in Amhara. Can it do that? Can it push TDF out of Dasi, Cambodia, Valdia? Uh, it will take some time. So that is what I'm saying that there is no likelihood of the start of talks now. It might take some time for the two sides to realize that uh, this war can only come to an end through dialogue, not through gun. 
Secondly, viewers, uh, yesterday Ethiopian PM Abiy Ahmed shared his videos, pictures from a battlefield, from battlefront in a far region. I shared his video clip with you. I saw a picture of PM Abiy. You can see the pictures on your screen. In the picture, some END of soldiers can be seen kissing PM Abiy's hand in reverence. Uh, I thought that I uh, will speak on that. If you kiss someone's hand out of respect, uh, nothing wrong with that. If you have reverence for someone, obviously you show your respect for someone. But the problem is that this reverence, this respect goes to the head of those persons who are receiving this respect and reverence. So you make them feel supernatural by showing this sort of behavior. If you have respect for someone, if you have reverence for someone, there are some other ways to show that as well. Don't make your leaders feel as if they are superhuman beings. That is why they say they, they had prophecies that they, they would be king uh, and they would be ruling Ethiopia. This sort of behavior goes to their heads. So I would say challenge your leaders, ask them questions. Don't uh, show such servile behavior. Uh, secondly, if we compare PM Abiy's battlefield appearance and TDF General's battlefield appearances, which we have seen in the past, TDF generals are fighting in the battlefield. We have seen them how they were dressed. We have seen them that they were not there for uh, just uh, showing their pictures. PM Abiy was there to show his presence, that he was in the battlefield because he was being criticized by TPLF supporters that uh, he did not visit, uh, he did not join his forces. So he went to a far, he shared some pictures, but the way he was dressed, it's very much clear that uh, he is not actively fighting. He might be leading his forces there. He might be uh, uh, holding meetings. He might be chairing meetings. But he is not actively fighting like TDF generals are fighting. And lastly, viewers, uh, UN uh, body, WFP, it held a press conference yesterday about latest humanitarian situation in Ethiopia. I have a video clip for you which is a statement from WFP spokesperson who says that the situation was dire, it turned into catastrophic and now it has, uh, it, it is the worst situation. Now around 10 million people in uh, Amhara, Afar and Tigray are in urgent need of aid. Some aid trucks have arrived in Tigray, around, around three dozen have arrived in Tigray, but uh, Tigray needs 100 trucks on daily basis. Situation in Afar, in Amhara is worsening too, too where tens of thousands uh, in both regions are in dire need of it. Watch the video clip showing WF spokesperson briefing us about uh, latest humanitarian situation in Tigray, uh, Afar and Amhara regions of Ethiopia. I think for watching. It's been a year. When this conflict started, we said it was dire. Six months into it, we said it was catastrophic. Three months ago, I warned that the West was yet to come. Today, 9.4 million people are living their worst nightmare. Of the people across northern Ethiopia in need of assistance, more than 80%, equivalent to 7.8 million people, of them are living behind battle lines. A convoy loaded with 2,200 metric tons of life-saving food is expected to arrive in Mekele in the coming days. 35 trucks have arrived so far. In addition, trucks loaded with food from Kombucha are being sent into southern Tigray today. Since mid-July, less than a third of the supplies required to meet estimated humanitarian food needs have entered the region. 
In this current round in Tigray, the World Food Programme has reached 180,000 people, which is just 7% of the 2.5 million WFP needs to reach. We are running out of words, really, to, to, to capture exactly um, the situation that is unfolding before our eyes. But what I can tell you, it is the textbook definition of a humanitarian crisis.